What's going on, everybody? This is the Apocalypse Project Podcast, also known as the TAP. I'm your boy, Play B, chilling with my boy, Rev. What's going on, everybody? And we're going to dive right into this. I don't know about you, and you could just weigh into this also, right. but I'm at a point where I am just so done with politics. No, I, I agree, man. I'm just so tired of it. Like, it's everywhere. You can't escape it. You know what I mean? It's in everything I do, everywhere I go. Everything. So at this point, I'm like, you know what, man? I'm good with it. I already, I, I feel like I'm kind of caught up to speed. And, and a lot of it's a bunch of bullshit anyway. You know no, what I mean? Okay, like, so, so it is. So I, I, I think I need to take the time. And I think part of it is because I've noticed recently that I've been accused of being a quote-unquote Trump supporter. And I had to really think about it and give it some really deep intellectual thoughts because the reality is is you know what I there is so much that I like about Trump and so far he probably has my vote in the next election I didn't vote for him in the last election in fact I was semi close to being a never trumper when he was running for office in 2016 okay so when I when when people accuse me of being a Trump supporter I have to really understand what they actually mean yeah. when they say that I don't think it necessarily means like oh you 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 very you've thought out through all of the you know the policies and you know no what they really mean is you're a racist right no I was gonna or, say yeah because yeah. a lot of people give me that too and I'm like I'm not a racist what the heck you or know? you're a racist or you're you're a xenophobe or you're some kind of I guess a white nationalist I just, I don't I'm still trying to figure out how Mexicans <laughs> can be white nationalists <laughs> I don't know. so so it's just like somebody somebody is wrong here. But the reality is, is that I had to stop and I had to think for myself and understand how did I get to this point where right. I'm actually on Team Trump. Let's put it that way. I'm on Team Trump. I'm not necessarily a flag-waving Trump supporter, yeah, right. though I have thought about it. <laughs> but there's reasons why that have got me to this point. So when 2016 rolled around... I were, or yeah, when the elections came around in 2016, I had heavy anxieties because I saw Trump as this this person, evil demon. No, or... no, no, no. I wouldn't go that far. I just saw him as somebody that was very thin skinned. Where if Kim Jong Un or Vladimir Putin just would have said something that he didn't like, then they'd be off going to war with go, everybody. Yeah, right. You know, we'd go to war with North Korea. We'd go to war with Russia. Or we'd go to war with. Iran or whatever the case may be, that was one of the things that I had. I was like, "Oh my God, this is the end of the, this is the end. This, this is it. We're we're, we're we're gonna we're we're all gonna die." And that, you know, that anxiety set in. You know, I didn't like Hillary, even and there was more than enough reasons why not. I didn't want to vote for Hillary, so I voted the same way that I voted in 2012, and that was with Gary Johnson and the Libertarian Party. For the last two presidential elections, I've been registered as a Libertarian. Um, and a quick note to that, I've moved away from the Libertarian Party, uh, partly because I don't believe in the stance that they take on religious freedoms and also their pro-choice, you know, pro-abortion uh, uh, stance. But what was the tipping point for me that pushed me over? I didn't walk willingly over right. to or, Team Trump. Yeah, okay? that's, that's my thing, too. A lot of people think that I just blindly just... Yeah, that, I'm, I'm the opposite of that. I, I, I actually go against the grain on a lot of things. I, I don't follow... Okay, okay you know, but before you go there, because look at it, there's a lot of, a lot of things that anti-establishment people don't realize about Trump, but he is actually an anti-establishment guy. Right. He is not your typical... Poly- I, don't, I don't believe he's a Republican. He is not your traditional Republican conservative. He is governing, governingly more conservative, but more conservatively than even George Bush. Yeah. It was think about that. We haven't rushed off to war with Iran, though if it were George Bush or even Obama, we would be in some kind of conflict in Iran. Right? Yeah. I and have the to same agree. thing with North Korea. There's been so much diplomacy. He's done things that no other president would thought to do because everybody was thinking like a politician. Right. But Trump doesn't think like a politician. He's so anti-establishment. Okay, but let me backtrack. That's not the reason why I am on Team Trump. Here's the reason why. So, it all began with the Brett Kavanaugh saga. Are you familiar with the Brett Kavanaugh saga? Uh, a little. Not okay. to say that I... The Supreme Court justice that Trump nominated to be in the Supreme Court, and all of a sudden, 
And this is a guy that's been on federal courts like for years and years and years and years. years. Okay, so and he's had to been vetted by the by the FBI and all these background things for years. Almost his whole professional career has been background checks and vetting process. Right. So he gets to the Supreme Court level. He gets nominated, and all of a sudden, when it comes to the end of his confirmation, all of a sudden, all these accusations come up. Oh, in high school in the eighties when he oh, was great. seventeen. It's always something though. You man. know, Come he was, he raped me and then all of a sudden so the Christine Blasey Ford was the main accuser that came out, said that when he was at this preparatory high school in Washington, DC in the mid eighties or whatever it was, that he forced himself on her or raped or whatever, whatever. And <laughs> how many Democrats just outright believed her story before she even testified, before the facts even came out. I was like, hmm. And how they villainized and demonized that man. It was basically, you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Yeah, right. Okay, so that's when I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, these Democrats are kind of crazy. And I I was on the edge of my seat during that whole process, just listening. And it's just like, this, this, this isn't adding up here. So that was the tipping point for me to kind of like really take a hard line look at what was really going on. I think that was kind of like the beginning. I don't want to say the beginning because like I've been kind of active, you know, I've really paid attention to politics, you know, since 2012 because before that I wasn't. But what what that did to me, it really showed me that how, how, I won't say, I don't want to say evil, but I just want to say just deliberately... (sighs) Is it ignorance or no, is it's it not malicious? Ignorant. No, no, it's malicious. It's not ignorant. It it is malicious, uh, and that because the, I started to realize how much that people were willing to go to any length. If Trump liked something or approved of something, they automatically had to go against it. Right, right. I mean, no matter what it was, he could have came outside and said, "Hey, it's a good day today." No, no it's not. No, it's a bad day today. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. That's been the and reaction. People do that. Yeah. That's been the reaction and for the last two yeah. and a half years. Right. I mean. It's just scrutinizing every, and this is the, and this is the one thing that I appreciate about Trump. It's just like he's not a politician. He'll speak his mind. He'll say what he wants. But that has gotten him into trouble because he doesn't speak like a politician. Right. He's very easily criticized. But then you can make his words say so many different things because he's not polished yeah. like a politician. So which is kind of good. And his Twitter feed, he's the one that made Twitter what it is today. Dang. So, anyways. So with all of that going on and then the election in 2018 with all of these wild left-wing Democrats and, you know, AOC and the Green New Deal and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar and just just this, this, this rolling mob of stupidity from the Democratic yeah. side. Um, and then as an independent, I'm an independent. Trump has my vote as of now. And as we're talking right now, he they, they just launched, as of today, an impeachment inquiry because he supposedly uh, had a, a quid pro quo with the president of Ukraine to try to have them investigate Joe Biden. OK, so we'll see how that goes out. And I mean, if it did happen, yeah, that's kind of bad. And yeah, it is impeachable. The question is, did it actually happen? But I don't trust the media. Right. For I, sure. That's I don't automatic. trust the media yeah. and I don't trust the Democrats because they're ultimately going to go to a place with this, which is already to the extreme. Like he's already guilty before they even even well, the, start the, looking into it. So the it's sad just thing like, why, is, why, why even look into it? The, to, to me, the sad thing is the media is social media now. Like everybody gets their information on social media and a lot of it is false. Like. If people would just take the time and and learn for themselves, what, whereas listening to misinformation and then passing it on as information and so on and so on. And before you know it, it's just everybody yeah. believes the hype. You know, it's like, oh, well, hold on. You know, there's always two sides to every story. But yet everybody's like, well, you know, just because he's Trump. He's got to be this evil dictator, freaking, you know, Freddy Krueger monster. Well, and it's like, yo, hold on. There's yeah, it's not fair. But if it were the other way around, if this was King Obama, you know, everybody would be all up in arms and, you know, it would be a big old deal. But it's like— Well, the thing that I didn't like is I didn't like being made a, made a fool of, okay? Right. So, like I said, when Trump first got in office, I did not like him. I did not like his personality. And I this way, he has character flaws, and one of them is his personality. He's not a great guy. Right. I'm going to say that up front. He's not a great guy. I like his policies, and I like how thing, he's running things, but at the same time, I don't think he's a great guy. But what I hated was, especially during the um, um, the Charlottesville incident, where 
they took his words, they cut out a specific part where it says they were good people on both sides. And basically saying because on both sides of that protest in Charlottesville, they were people protesting about taking the, the statues down of the Confederate soldier. Right. And then the other side, uh, which did consist of racists and white nationalists and white supremacists who wanted that statue to remain up. Now, what people just focused on, the mainstream media focused on, and this is why no, people think he's a racist because he said there were good people on both sides. Well, there were good people on both sides of that right, of right. that protest. You had the people that wanted it up. There are people that wanted it down. No, nah, but they both they're there to protest. So they made the assumption that he was talking about oh, though he's the, the, the whites, the whites. Yeah, yeah. But when you go back and you listen to the whole damn clip, <laughs> he says, "I'm not talking about the white supremacists. They right. should be condemned." Yeah, but they totally. cut that out. They, they, they take that out. But and when you point that out to people that still use that as their ar- argument, they're like they they like. I'm I'm probably going to be upset, but when I talked to Angel last time, he brought that up, and I was like, "Well, did you ever listen to the whole thing?" Well, w- no. is it, would it would he be willing to get rid of Mount Rushmore then? Trump? It, it, no, no, no. Like those those people that are saying, "Oh, you know, we got to get rid of these statues," or like Angel. Well, the okay. the, the Confederate statues is because it, it's supposed to be a symbol of slavery. Well, look what they 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 stole this land from from the Native Americans. They enslaved Native Americans, and that mountain. Let's not forget to um, in South Dakota, wherever it is, to to those people was a very sacred mountain, and they defaced it. How come they're not up in arms about that? But yeah, they want to talk about a statue. Yeah, you know? I, yeah. There, there, there's it's the, like it's the, a double-edged sword. It's like okay, well then, it's like either have it your way or no way. But it's like okay, well then, if you're gonna take it to this extreme, then let's go all the way to that extreme then, and let's see where your heart really lies. Like Walmart and this whole ammo thing. Like if they really felt that bad about it, how come they just didn't take all the ammo off the shelves? Yeah, but, you know. Well, and that's another thing like, too. Come on, man. You know, when you look at uh, I hate calling him Beto. His name is not Beto. It's Robert Francis O'Rourke. Okay. Get that this fake Mexican that's running for president out of Texas. Oh God! All right. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm all for. Okay, here we go. Everybody's gonna be all okay. Jose's a racist. I'm all for Mexican president or whatever. You know, he's not Mexican. But it's like Beto O'Rourke is not Mexican. What is he? Is he what Spaniard? No, no. He is. He he he's he's white. No way. He was just. He had because he's from Texas, from San Antonio or El Paso, so he was just given the nickname Beto because his name is Robert. Oh, but he's riding on that. But he's riding on that, So, and he speaks the craziest Spanish. I don't know if you've ever heard him speak Spanish, and I'm going to pull it up for you right now because it is the f- funniest uh, funniest thing I have ever heard in my life. This economy has got to work okay, so this is, for everyone. This is our, so this is that guy. And right this now is the we guy know that wants to that take your AR. And it's going to take all this coming together to, to make sure the, uh, that it does. Necesitamos the, incluir cada persona en el éxito de esta economía. Pero si queremos hacer eso, necesitamos incluir cada persona en nuestra democracia. Uh, cada, votar, ca- cada votante necesitamos la representación y cada voz necesitamos escuchar. Right now we have a system that favors those who can pay. Um, not the greatest Spanish speaker. <laughs> oh, man. You know, here, watch, But he, he, here, here's another here's one. Another one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's being asked a question by Telemundo or somebody. The medicine. Turn back Valeria and her father Oscar. Yeah, he could have tried a little better. Got like a, <laughs> a speech coach or someone to teach him. <laughs> well, but th- that's what I've been saying. The Democratic Party has just been this this incredibly just. They're just riding the wave. That's all it is, bro. They're just riding. They're that. pander. They're just pander. They they pander. Yeah. The funny thing is, like Kamala Harris, who's running for president right now, and uh, so California has always been really hard, especially on marijuana convictions, right? I mean, it's right. only been recently. Well, she was the attorney general of the state that put plenty of people behind bars. Like she, she was the the top cop in the state, right? As attorney general. So while she was, while she was, uh, I don't think she was, but like when she was in college or whenever she was, she was admitted to on the Breakfast Club that morning show with right. Charlemagne and whatever else. So she admitted to smoking marijuana and listening to Tupac and oh, trying oh, to be, gosh. you know, just that 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 trying to be that pandering, but yet she still. 
help convict people that were yeah it's it's ridiculous but we had medical marijuana laws in the 90s mid 90s i think 95 started yeah but she was using it rec, rec- rural recreational rec- recreationally thank you uh. and then yet she was still putting people in jail for it um you know, damn. And uh, you see, but that he, sounds like a politician, but right? Here, here, here's what I'm saying, though. Everybody, even on the Republican side, like I said, I, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, but the thing that I look at is that I do not like establishment kind of guys. Like, and I think Donald Trump it, embodies this anti-establishment kind of mentality. It just so happens that he's the Republican president, right? Okay, but he's really. I mean, I, I appreciate it. He's the first Republican president ever come out in support of LGBT rights. First. And I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. I'm glad he did it. He wants to force other countries that make homosexuality illegal to ch- to change that. All right? Dang. This is this is the first. Yeah, I I see a lot of what is it LGBTQ or whatever like condemning Trump, oh he's against us and yeah. you know that's that misinformation I'm talking about. Yeah. Even even amongst like family members that I speak to, I'm like, wait a minute, you know, are you sure you're saying that right? Did you hear that right? And then a lot of times, you know, we always end up arguing over it. But it's at the same time, it's like, okay, fine. Uh, we all have our opinions. We all have our views. That's what makes this country great. My biggest, if I were to say, I guess my biggest pet peeve is believing it just because everybody else is saying it. To me, that's what pisses me off the most. It's like. Just because everybody else is doing this don't mean we all have to follow, you know, the status quo. Um, I don't know. I've never been into conformity. I, I'm. Yeah, but so so th- this this is where all this is basically boiling down to. So after listening today and then realizing like how how quickly that people jump to conclusions without listening to the facts first. And that was the main reason what kind of pushed me onto Team Trump during the whole Kavanaugh thing, how they were willing to tell this person – it's like, well, you're not being convicted of a crime, but you're accusing this person and then saying you're guilty until proven innocent. And it's exactly what they're doing today with Trump with the announcement that they're opening up an impeachment inquiry because of this whole uh, this uh, supposed quid pro quo that he had right. with the president of Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden. Basically, what happened is supposedly the the accusation is that Trump called the the president of Ukraine and said, hey. We're not going to give you aid unless you investigate Joe Biden and his son's yeah, dealings in this country. Do people not know every word spoken in the White House on the phone or, or in an office are recorded? It's it's all recorded. It's all, it's been recorded. I well, forgot Trump, since okay, when. Okay, so, so he, like, here's what's happening. What did you call him off his cell tomorrow, phone? Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. No, they, they, it's, it's a, there's just a transcript. Tomorrow Trump is going to release the transcript. Nice. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's, but today the Democrats... Announced they're going to do an investment, uh, an investigation, investigation. or investigation or a impeachment inquiry. It's not an impeachment; it's just an inquiry to see if he should be impeached. Okay, based upon this, I say, well, wait a minute, the facts ain't all out yet. Yeah. So why don't we wait till all the facts are out because we still gotta. There was there's just so much. I'm just done with it. So I was getting a little bit irritated. So I decided, what would a political. Um, fast to look like for me right. because it is good to stay informed it's good to really like have your ear to the tracks to see where things are going because but at the same time it's just it's just ir- ir- irritating and frustrating and i probably need to take a break and on that note we probably need to take a break so with that we'll we'll take a break and we'll be right back and we're going to try to get angel on the phone so, all right So Takashi69 takes a plea deal. For those of you who don't know, Takashi69 is the New York-based rapper who was arrested last year on multiple federal charges. And as of this date, he has taken a plea deal. He was facing, I heard, between 47 to 57 years to life in prison. Damn. But apparently, it's been reduced to just six months. What? How much snitching do you got to do? Well, and then did you know they, they, they transport him from the jail to the court in an underground tunnel? You know, if you get an underground tunnel treatment, bro, you, you're doing some heavy snitching. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. That's no joke. So I'm going to bring up his rap sheet really quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
look it up online really quick. But I just have one question. Based upon, I mean, so here's a guy. I mean, I know you're semi familiar with him. The guy with the rainbow colored hair, right. the 69 tattooed on his head. Um, just, just very, I don't want to say flamboyant, but man, he was just loud and some would say, I would say, ab- uh, obnoxious. Right. I can't even say that word. Ab- that's how, ab- that's how bad. Obnoxious? Yeah. <laughs> that's how bad it, it was. <laughs> that's how right? bad it bothered you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, it was just this. I didn't know how to receive it because here's this this short, slanky, skinny Latino, you know, just just doing this hardcore gangster rap, you know, and uh, and being uh, touting himself as a blo- whoa 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 oh, oh we got to answer that oh, 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 oh. we got to get that hello bitch yeah <laughs> what's up man oh that was for your brother <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to. Uh, My bad. Uh, we we switched phones that way. Uh, Rev could do research on his uh, BlackBerry. Whatever. And uh, well, you don't know what's going on. I kind of fell in a little bit. Why? Well, which I just wanted to get exactly what his charges were. Well, he was charged with like basically conspiracy to murder, I believe, and like for conspiracy of murder, you said. Well, because he ordered a hit. On somebody, I mean, no one died, but I mean, it was shooting that. Happened. Well, I know we had the big thing with Rap a Lot down in Texas that there was a beef. Cause there was a lot of shit. He was just talking, he was going around, just talking shit, just trying to get clout, you know, because he just had the blood behind him. And that's a new word that I, I came across. What and, clout? Yeah, and deal- that's not new. That's old. Well, I know, it, old. I know, but it's I never heard it though. Like it's thrown around. It's, co- it's mass, coming back. Yeah. Not that it's coming back. It's just being popular nationwide. I heard that forever. I think that kind of, if I'm made, I don't know how wrong or right I might be, but I think it's in the Bay Area. You know, even a lot of slings come from the Bay, so. So what do you think of him taking this plea deal? I mean, he knew he was going to do it. Martha Stewart didn't snitch on nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that he has more prison cred than, uh, or Martha Stewart has more prison cred than uh, Takashi 6 9 <laughs> Well, that, I think she she lied to them, and she then lied to I, you know, investigators. Yeah, about you know, but she was helping her homies out. But she could have just said a bunch of other shit. You know, she knows a bunch of other shit. She just <laughs> nah, she just ate her time. Now I know it's not nearly as much, you know, but still though. I yeah, but she, she kept it real. Yeah, for sure. I think he would have snitched even if it was just a, a couple months, you know, or five years, you know. Yeah, so it says, uh, on the night of November 18, 2018, six men were arrested by the ATF uh, agents in the New York City, or in New York City, uh, 6'9", Shadi Jamal Mel Murda Jones. I'm uh-huh. not going to read all these names. Anyways, all these people were arrested by ATF agents in New York. Uh, da, 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 let's see. 6ix9ine was confronted by inmates affiliated with the rival Crips gang. I guess that happened in prison that same day. I'm just trying to find a list of all those guys' charges because I know they were extensive. They, they got to the point where they were, he was looking at 47 to 57, I think, years to life to in life. prison. Damn. Um, so and my question is... is he ordered there- a shooting. He ordered people to get beat up. Yeah, but that, that, that's all major felonies. That's yeah, major well, there, there's felonies, also, well, there's also like weapons charges. There was, con- uh, uh, um, you know, there was possession oh, with guns. intent to sell guns and other things. I know there, there it was, yeah, it was yeah. a pretty long, extensive list. But my question is, it was just, I guess I kind of, I didn't, I guess I shouldn't say I didn't expect it, but it was, I was still kind of shocked knowing that he took the plea bill and he was snitching like all these things out. Like all these, really, I, I, all these. I thought he was gangster. What happened to his gangster? Well, if you were Come facing on. if you yeah. were facing fifty to sixty years to life in prison, hey, no man, because you know what you signed up for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean that's true. You know what you signed up. You know the streets was dangerous. You know what you're getting into. Just like law enforcement or people that yeah, that true. willingly put their life on the lines. Like, bro, I feel bad for these families. You know, and and all that is wrong. Whatever. You know, cops get killed and all I don't that. Feel but, bad for them. but you know what you signed up for. If if you if you knew the job was dangerous before you took it, just like him, you know, it's like then take your time like a man, you know what I'm saying? At least people could respect you uh-huh. that way. Yeah, well the thing is though, so how what 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 is the likelihood that he has touched at this point? What? What what how how easily do you think it would it would be to get for somebody to touch him? I don't know. It, de- it depends. It w- I think I think he's gonna get touched because of his own stupidity. I think he's gonna be untouchable 
he's going to be in some type of witness program. He's going to have to get his tattoos all removed. Yeah, but... But I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> even if he comes out and tries to rap again. Just be, you know... And I think people will listen he's gonna, to He's going to be there a Christian rapper? So. <laughs> possibility. Possibility. He's going to go in the men's home? Set. The women's home? The Christian. Uh-huh. <laughs> he and, uh, not, I mean, it's, a, it's likely because a lot of people that go into jail get religious, and his ass is prime well, He's not that. going to jail. He's getting maybe six months. Is, from what I've heard, he's getting... He, Probably he's still this, in there. Gonna, this is what I'm saying. How do you? How, how are you? Still, he, how are you facing no. up to 60 years to life in prison, and all of a sudden snitch so much that you can get it down to six months? How does that work? Because he pled guilty to the charges, he hasn't been sentenced yet. He could still get sentenced to 40 years. The judge could be like, you know, but well, he yeah, could basically, you know, so so that he could still go to jail for like five years or do a year, or they could just give him time served. He's most likely gonna get time served. Or he's going to get a very reduced sentence of like two years or whatever, five years, and you know he's already and he's going to be in custody till then because they're doing the whole. Thing. I mean, they're doing it faster than they normally do it, but he's already pled guilty to it. It's just all he hasn't been sentenced yet. That's how it works. It's not guilty than sentenced, and then you work with him. No, it's you know you're you know because. Because you can just back out on the deal if they just, ju- you know, they, they charge you and send you. You can just back out on the deal out there because yeah. it's already set right. done. So that's why it's like, okay, plead guilty to this, you know, cooperate with us. And then when it comes to your sentencing, they wait to, they'll wait to the sentencing then until after their cases are all done. You know, yeah. Shawty and all, all other motherfuckers that they got, you know, these charges on, kidnapping charges on them, yeah. conspiracy to murder, yeah. you know, all this other yeah. shit that he got charged with. Um, Definitely. He ordered it. They they carried it out pretty much. Pretty much what what, what is going on. Okay. Well, let me, let me ask you this. I mean, but really, it was them telling him what to do. He was ordering it, and they were doing it. So it was like, yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think the move to Takashi to cop the plea deal to uh, plead uh-huh. guilty was really selfish? Because he, apparently, what's going to happen? Because. If, but he, that if, was his game from the beginning. That was his game from the beginning. He yeah. Knew that. Okay, but but he, he, hear me out though. He because has no he, here here's what I'm thinking. So if he's not touchable, okay. So if if he's untouchable, what is the likelihood of those close to him? Maybe his current girlfriend, his former girlfriend, his daughter, family members. Do you think that would be a possibility for somebody of his level because he's so high profile and? He caused so much. I mean, I think at this point, I mean, the the train nine. Well, there you are. They're already thre- they're already threatening done. his parents. Damn. They're already well, not his parents. They're already threatening his dad. Dad. dad but well, his dad's threatened. been they're dead. Threatened. His dad died a long time ago. But I don't know about his they've mom. They've been threatening but... his baby mama. They've been threatening. No, they've been threatening him. So yeah, it's a possibility. Hmm. And if you were in that position, you would I'm do this. Yeah. No. Why would you sign up? Why would you put your daughter in that situation? That's what I would think. Yeah. So why would you yeah, be no shit. situation? Because the trade, the trade bloods were there. I don't know. I mean, I've been in New York and I've been to blood neighborhoods out there, and I'm with things. No one know where, know where you want to fuck around. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Have you ever listened to any of his music? Nope. Proud to say that. Proud to say I don't <laughs> have a single. I shit never. On his- I never heard a whole song because it's kind of like I've heard uh, a song. I've, I've heard a whole song like when I we heard listen to it because you're a pal wankster and but I want to see what he's doing and this guy's and then it comes to found out that you know there's a there's a track that is called gumbo yeah where he's in there and he's he, he's waving around red flags and um that day is when he pretty much joined the blood because he brought a bunch of red rags and was like as you know said oh you know so it's like well i from what from what i've looked into it seems like he's been a part of the bloods from his teens nope I'm surprised they didn't dry his pockets out and then get rid of him. You know how we know how he got discovered through them? How? He was a busboy. And he just, you know, they were there eating. He rapped for them. And they thought he was a good rapper. And just kind of, you know, oh, he was good. some bars. And then he just caught. He just caught on. Do you think, you know, he's, do you think were, he has any skills? I mean, I have listened to a couple of his songs. They, or, they originally said, because this is what uh, people inside were saying, that they originally wanted him to be like those rock rappers. Because like, Around the time he got was getting big was when the rock rap was getting really popular. But he just he just got into the blood gang because the blood gang saw money they can get from him, so they pumped him up, and it just started working. Started getting more views and views. So they bankrolled and, him so he could eventually bankroll them. 
Well, they were bankrolling. And that's what, what he's admitting to. He's like, I was paying the blood to this spot. I would get 250. Well, yeah, that's I what I mean. 100 or something thousand. Like, that's what he was saying in court, I think. Well, no, uh, that, 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 that testimony. No, that's what I mean. The, the, he, uh, so, so the bloods bankrolled him. They us. pushed you, him. You hang with us. And then eventually, you, you, when he got a big enough star, then he basically turned around and then repaid or even was bankrolling. You hang with us. You get the clout of blood. You don't have to do the initiations. You don't have to do all that bullshit. You just pay us. You know what I'm saying? The, you know, they were, they were paying, you know, that's how they were making the money. You know, so he had to get initiated. So they, you know, so they were letting, you know, they were, you know, and him being stupid, him thinking he's untouchable was ordering shit over the phone, recording, doing shit on live FaceTime, you know, doing, threatening people and Instagram doing shit, live. you know. And shootings yeah. were actually happening. Every concert was going through the shootings happening and shit like he was instigating shit. You know, and he's bringing these knuckleheads not thinking these guys are just going to start trouble. You know, he's not, you know. First of all, if, well, he did have the big homies and stuff around him, closely around him, but he had a lot of knuckleheads around him, too. I was taking advantage of the situation, so. And it all just coming back to him. But at the end of the day, he knew if he was coming, he was just going to snitch because, you know, he ain't about that life. Yep. I yeah, guess somebody out of control, man. Some some parents dropped the ball there. <laughs> Anyways, so that's, so that's how we started. He was created for just money purposes, but it just yeah, got it. And got too crazy. So that's the sixth name. Well, I guess we'll have to stay posted to see what happens with that. But all right, so let's go into a different topic now. I wanted to uh, talk to you both about this because I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, how about parenting? Parenting. Uh-huh. So. Um, have you ever given it any, any thought of like how are you parenting? Does that anxiety ever sit in for you? Like, am I, think, I, am I, I doing a good job? Did I do a good job? I think that's um, well. I can't speak for everybody, you know, because you got dopers out there and people doing stupid shit. But I think that's just uh, that goes through every parent's mind. Like, how could it not? You know, that's just ingrained. I think in our DNA to preserve our lineage. But Actually, I never thought about this before. Like it's like you just think about it. Yeah, like, until you become a parent. Yeah, it's yeah, just like it's, it's like true. something that gets turned on. But you got to remember everything. Your 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 body is designed for self preservation, whether it be you personally or your offspring. Um, that's why it's so easy for a parent to jump in front of a bullet for their kids or whatever. You know, it's it's uh, we're we're programmed to do that automatically. It's in our DNA. You know, self preservation uh-huh. is just part of the human nature. And and that that mirrors closely with like you you that mirrors closely with religion. That's why a lot of people go into religion. It's a, it's a, a form of self preservation because <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I want to go to heaven, right? Um, yeah. But you know, there's been a lot of psychologists and a lot of studies done on self preservation, and it 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 does come back to preserving oneself. Whether if you don't have kids, then then your soul, or if you have kids, then your offspring. Yeah, yeah. You know. But yeah, ultimately, uh, I think every every parent, as soon as they become a parent, whether naturally or not, like if you adopt a child, even I mean, that's something that just automatically clicks on and turns on in your brain. But is, is preservation. there is there yep, is there a certain that. standard or objective, like a way to say, hey, this you're either good like our parents. It's like not not to cast aspersions or judgment, but to say maybe that wasn't the best. Maybe this way isn't the best way to parent. Right. Or ex- examples that you see, you know, laterally. You know, that's not a good example. That's not a good example, right? Yeah. So then my question is, can we honestly hold the standard to it? Like, here's here's the right way. Either do it this way or or you're wrong. Well, I, I think it, that's a tricky question. That, that, that question there could put you in a corner. But I think the better answer would be um, learning from our mistakes, but also remembering we don't live long enough to make them all ourselves. So we also have to learn from the mistakes of others. Mm-hmm. Meaning we know what our parents did wrong. We see what people do right. Can we implement those things that we see other people doing right now? But see, you can implement them, but will they work in your di- family dynamic as well? Sometimes we got to modify certain things that, you know, just because it's working for this family don't automatically mean it's going to work in this family. You know, you yeah. can't just plug in someone else's deal and plug it into your family and expect it to work in the exactly same, the way. same way. Yeah, yeah. You know? everybody's different. <clears throat> that's 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 a good thought. But yeah, parenting is a it's a good one, man. Uh, but I think like uh, the the thing with parenting is like you know you always say, and there's literally thousands of books on the subject. But a, a lot of people say you know it's it's like it all comes down to experience, and and that and me saying that I'm saying we don't live long enough to make all these. Ex- or have all these experiences ourselves. So yeah, it's a good uh-huh. thing to seek help and, and, and guidance. But ultimately, I think uh, sometimes we just have to follow our gut as well. 
um, you know, because family dynamics is it's a, it's a good one, man. That's that's something that uh, it's a good. We could do a, a whole subject. show yeah, on that if we actually series, prepared actually, and, yeah. and actually got some things that's done because it's been on my mind a lot um, lately too. I think I'm, I think I'm doing a good job. I don't really get stressed out and anxiety too much about like the general responsibility of parenting. You know, but right. I'm in a whole different. It's like we're all in different situations. You know, so yeah, to a degree, to a degree. You know. But I mean, in comparison to what my baby mama used to paint about me, shit, I'm doing fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah, for because sure. Because the truth, because the, because the truth is, you know, I am, you know, I am what I am, and it, that's what and I'm a great dad, and we have a great, you know, relationship. You know, yeah, because I, I, I think ultimately, my do- go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, but oh no, but you know, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I like it. I love it. I don't, I don't see it. But I'm still in the beginning process. I still haven't gotten to school. And this and that, but yeah. I mean, well, the, the interesting thing with parenting, because uh, I have a teen, he's sixteen, going to be seventeen, uh, so I got years ahead of you guys. Is uh, you know, as he's getting older now, and I'm seeing you know him changing from a boy to a teen to now becoming a man or an adult. Um, it's uh, w- yeah, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> it's like I would love. I wish I could just go back and just do it all over again, just to relive those years and just to do it again it's something like you, you know you always hear parents say man enjoy these years because you never get them back and it's so true because like man you know i wish i it's thought flying. differently back then you know what i'm saying like i wish i would have yeah you know done done some things better better or maybe taken more trips or you know what i mean stuff like that but um you know it's one of those deals where it's like for me anyway it's like man i wish i could just go back and redo it just one more time you know What do you? Oh, great dad. Yeah, uh-huh. I think so, man. So uh, uh, just uh, what? No, I was gonna say. So, what? What do you think? What's your take on um, on this whole parenting thing? Do Do you think it's a uh, uh, one fit all or? Of course, it's not one fit all. You can't just say do the same thing because you know families have different dynamics to them. You know. Well, right. yeah. Look at the. I know, know there's different go around cult, dynamics. You know, different culture. You know, cultural lines. Okay. Let me let me you let know, me ask you this cause question. Because even within because 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 even within a family that both do a generalistic good thing, right? They're there. They go to work. You know, they do things with the kids. They, you know, they show infection, you know, affection and encouragement to their kids. You know, but um. <clears throat> It's generalistic, but I think the biggest struggle with the melding of people of two different religions trying to come together. Because it's about doing the same right thing, right? Generalistically, they do the same right things, but they're just in different paths. And what path do you want to go? And, uh, right. So. Well, I do believe there are some things that are that are objectively wrong. And, I and think- that was probably my is- I mean, the issue within the, you know, in as far as the parenting of, of, me, and my ch- of me and my child, you know, it was, it was like the religious aspect. Like, do you, do you feel you should have been more religious, or? or? Yeah, I oh, think no. so. I think no. that that I think you should have. Really, course, really, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought about that because everybody knows, like, you know, I'm I'm a non-believer, you know, and uh, for now, yeah. but but you know, she's around other believers and stuff like that. Can, so can you even hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, and and look, and I do believe there are some things that that are objectively wrong that uh, when it comes to parent. And one of the things yeah, that was have, so, but, yeah, too, but, but you, it can be difficult because you could say, well, I got that. Even people tell me like because you don't go to church, you ultimately can't be, you know, they, in their opinion. When you when you get you know when you when you interpret what they're trying to say, at the end of the day, you know, when you get behind all the when you get around all the bullshit. If you're not a Christian, you're not a can't be the best father, you know. No, I don't agree with that. I, I, I don't agree with that. Disagree with, you know. No, I, I don't agree with that. I think there comes to more than being a parent than going to church and teach. I mean, that that is that is not that is not adequate enough to being a good parent. But what what I will say is uh, one of the greatest examples recently that we have of, in my opinion, was being a terrible parent is what's happened over the last couple of days. And I don't like to get too political right now because I'm trying to avoid it. But the whole 16-year-old girl that was speaking at the uh, uh, UN, whatever, for the climate change. Did you see that, Angel? I seen some shit. She was pretty pissed off. (laughs) <laughs> but apparently she, i guess i should have clicked on the on the video i seen the story but i didn't click on it yeah i mean in fact you should probably pull it up and 
play it on my phone. Yeah, I was gonna say she's not gonna she's not gonna forgive us for what was going she's on. How dare you? How dare you? And I'm just like, whoa, what the heck? But the, the thing is, though, Michael Knowles said something, and I I need to bring it up. What do you disagree with that little girl? What What does she say? That she blamed her parents, or what? No, she don't blame her parents. She blames ev- like. I'll I'll find it. Hold one second. You don't have a splitter on there, huh? No. But it's not cutting down. Could you play it from your phone and on the phone at the same time? I'm pretty sure. Go to go to YouTube. And so maybe Angel might be able. Oh, he won't be able to hear it though. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I could play it back. What are you eating, Angel? Like I think one of the one of the worst things that I think one of the worst things I think you can do as a parent is is import your your political I think political mainly your political beliefs on um, on a little kid. Like I I would never have my kids wear a Make America Great Again hat. Who who is this person again? Who Greta? Just go to um, yeah, just go just put in Greta. I'm pretty sure it'll come up. Greta UN. This is all wrong. Can you hear it, Angel? Yeah. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? <laughs> That's not a reaction. I'm supposed to be laughing. That's a child. My How child dare you? With your empty words. Empty and yet, prince. I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money an and fairy tales of eternal no, she actually economic has, uh, growth. Like Asperger's or Down you? syndrome. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, why would you put your daughter in that position? Uh, that that that's in my mind. Is, more than th- it's kind of like child abuse, right? It's like she no. doesn't completely understand what she's saying or doing. Do you really believe she completely understands what she's saying or doing? Is she an are expert? You judge, are you judging by her by whatever? Um, no, well, I mean, I would don't you know, trust the ability that is, she is, has? No, yeah. no. How about this? Is she a professional in the field that she's talking about? No, but okay. Is she a scientist? No, let me put it to you like this. But, but if, if her parents right. told her, if her parents told her, hey, you know, this is expressed the way you feel. This is how you feel, and she's trusting her, and her parents to do the right thing. Then that's one thing. Uh, uh, but if they're using her as a spokes, like if just they've a, indoctrined her, yeah, indoctrinated then, her. That's another thing. Um, but then again, you can make the same argument with people that make their kids go to church every Sunday. You know what I mean? They're indoctrinating yep. them. They're, you, just, you, you know, it's, it's group think. You know, but, I don't like it. But the thing is, though, I don't like it when you use children and push them to the front to promote your ideology. Do you know? Do that's you know what I don't. Parents, that, do, that's do that's what I don't. Do you know yeah. their parents? Huh? You know, it was her parents that did it. She wasn't just like. Yes, have you researched it? Her parents time. are probably. So here's the thing about it: a picture surfaced of Greta wearing an Antifa shirt, and she. I apparently, I mean, this is just here. So I haven't looked into it, but what happened was there's uh-huh. a picture that surfaced of her in an Antifa shirt. She said she borrowed it from her friend. It's not hers, but then her parents were seen wearing okay. the same shirt at two different times, the same exact shirt. So, okay. I mean. But this this is part of my problem. They want to lead a movement, and there, there's an excellent piece. I mean, if you want really quick, look, look it up on your phone. Uh, type in uh, Michael Knowles and Greta, and he makes a really good point. He actually caught a lot of flack, and Fox News actually uh-huh. apologized for his words and promised they would never bring him back on the show, or back on Fox again for some reason. I, um, but he made this very excellent point, and I'm going to let him articulate it. And I want to see. Is pollution wanna, a problem? Huh? Is pollution a problem? Nobody said that it wasn't. I don't. I haven't met one conservative or uh, Republican, libertarian, or anybody who said that that it is a problem. Is it a problem? It was a dramatic thing to tell people like, "Hey, pollution's going to be an issue. It's going to affect us." I mean, if you look at water right now, a lot of big money are buying up water sources around the world, right? Because what? Well, because Water has really become very fresh. Water become very scarce because of all the fracking and the pollution that's going into their sea now. That all these you know runoffs that they're now finding with new 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 you know detection methods. 
Yeah. So they're you know you know fresh freshwater areas with with yeah. underwater okay. wells. Well, hold like on that. that hold, are on being on that up hold on to that thought. Hold on to that thought. Hold on. And, and being saved. So when water becomes more scarce, I mean that's a, that's just the fact. If you look at that money, the big uh, the big short about the recession, it says that that guy that found the recession that, that saw it coming, his next thing was investing was in, was into water, because water is going to be the guy's looking for where money's going to be at. Okay, Angel, and hold on. Angel, Angel, water. hold on, hold on. Go hold ahead, go ahead. Let me, let me get this ad out of the way. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna play this little clip and then we could respond to this. Hold on, hold on, Avi. Okay, here's this clip. Meatless diets are actually far worse for the environment than the regular meat-filled diets. They increase emissions, they increase energy use, they increase water use. But none of that matters because the climate hysteria movement is not about science. If it were about science, it would be led by scientists rather than by politicians and a mentally ill Swedish child who is being <laughs> exploited by her parents and by the international How dare left. dare you? These numbers are too uncomfortable. I can't understand that video. Still you can't? No, I just don't like did you hear it? You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand no, your betrayal. All. I mean, I hear something, but I can't understand The it. eyes of all future generations How are upon now? you. And if you choose to fail us, I say no. we will never forgive you. What are you doing? But what you're saying is coming. Relax, skinny boy. I got this, okay? You're I don't know. I guess he was criticizing. Just tell me. So he basically said that if if this movement is is as important as it is, it's not being led by scientists. It's being led by politicians and children. And basically his response is a mentally ill children because Greta has been diagnosed apparently with like uh, she's on the autism um, scale. Wow. Who said that? Well, if, if she's on the autism scale, is she not? That's a fucked up thing to say. He's pretty much saying she's stupid and do what she's saying. He didn't say that. Saying, Science said that. What's no, no? He's trying to say that in a scientific way, and so you know, so called politically correct. Talk about being all the people being politically correct. That's a way to be politically correct to be an asshole. So he can say that. Well, it's scientific. That's that's political correctness. That's it. So so if somebody's autistic, I thought you guys not, were against that. You know, I thought you guys were against that. That's a fucked up thing to say. But if somebody, if somebody, but so explain. What's that fucked up thing to say? Okay, well, stop and saying that, that and explain what, yourself. What, what, the, what the little girl's trying to say is true. Like well, okay, okay, angels, angels, what, stop. You're doing it again. going to be an issue. You're doing it again. Gonna be an issue okay. that our kids are going to have to face. Okay, okay, so, listen, listen. Can well, you, I, I, slow, yeah. wait, hold on, hold on. Angels, slow down. Okay, slow down. Back up. I am so down. you're you're moving from one thing to the next. Let's go to the thing. So you said that it's a political no, purpose. No, you don't like what I'm saying. So is is him saying? So, do you believe that somebody who's who is autistic is not mentally ill? There's people that are mentally ill that are very, very smart. We talk about. That's not what I asked. Ted, Ted Bundy was mentally ill, obviously, right? But he was fucking very. But he smart. was a murderer, so that just. <laughs> exactly, but <I'm> saying, <laughs> but you're saying, but you're saying that that because someone's mentally ill, they're not smart. I'm just just proving. Did you I wrong say right? that? I'm just no, Angel. You're you're you're. There's people you're the that one are jumping with to Down them. syndrome. I think there's people with Down syndrome that, that are actors and stuff like that. Yeah, like savants. You know, they do shows and stuff like that. So it's like these people are obviously intelligent. You can't say yeah, it's fucked up thing to say. And she's correct on something. He has no other thing to go to. And pretty much say he's that she's stupid okay, and a, in a what politically did she, correct what did way. She say? That, that's a fucked up thing to do. So well, okay, but what, what, though, what answers did she give? But, she, she was just making an emotional plea. That's the problem. That's what he's saying. Everybody's making emotional pleas and no solutions, no answers. But is it true what she's what they're trying to say? And it's to be an issue they're going to have to face. Is that not true? That's what. I, I, but true? let's let's get to let's get back to the whole reason why we brought this up. This had to do some with no, parents. No, hold on. Can we answer that question? Because that's the whole. That was the whole thing about it, though. It might have been a little dramatic or whatever, but is it true? Because it is true. It, it, our, our kids gonna have to deal. If we don't change certain things, a lot of things. Or our kids gonna have to deal with certain things, not have certain things, certain animals. You know, what I'm saying certain waterways not gonna be clean. Well, there are animals that just go naturally and stink all they're the already, time. But the what, what ninety we're some doing percent is, of animals that have ever existed have, are extinct. But but now it's starting to happen because of what we can do to change it. That's no, that's true. Thing. But the, the what I'm getting out of this is she's what, right? she but shouldn't have been there in the question. first place. You didn't answer my question yet. Is what she? They're, they're trying to get across. Is it true? Is it true that our kids and our grandkids are going to have to deal with with the, with with the, what we're doing if we don't change it? No, that's, the, the science is, is out on that yet. That's why this. That, why do you think there isn't scientists? No, it is out. Why do you think it there's is scientists it is, out? It is out. It is out. 
But why do I get the feeling that it, are they trying to blame Americans now for that? Or like play, no, that's no, the that's no the feeling I'm question. getting out of. No it. one's answered my question yet. I I, I will Is say. Is it a fact? I just that I did if, answer your if, question. If we allow, if we don't, you know, now these waterways are being affected through, you know, uh, the, during the regulations that are being taken off, and these continue to happen, is it going to oh, be negatively affecting our kids? No, that's true. But, about Trump. but you're inserting Trump in there now because you no, have, that's you true. But it's not question. only just us; it's it's world governments. Uh, uh, you yeah, know, every, every, we could do what we can, but if India doesn't participate, the biggest polluters in this world are India and, and China. China. Yeah. It's not the United States. They're the cause. Okay, well, of, let it be the world example again. In okay, well then, let's all just stop buying shit from China. Then, are you willing to do that? <laughs> stop going to What's Walmart. That? Then let's all just stop buying shit from China. Why we? Why we? See, we're we're fueling the beast. We like what we're getting out of it, but we're oh, hating how we're getting it. Almost everything in my house is from Goodwill, so I bought it from Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, no, never but, mind. And I did actually. I did buy some American-made products today too. An expensive one, a new iron skillet. Yeah, nice. And you, you know, know what? So also, you like, know what? Also, is in for, uh, you know, to go back to the Subaru. whole thing about the parenting. Uh-huh. But it does frustrate me, like those cute little videos that people put on Facebook of like kid, like like you see little kids on stage at a church and they're preaching or testifying is like that is also on the same vein as this yeah. so i'm I, it's across the board it's yeah, not but just what they're saying is not true though but what they're saying is not true. well <laughs> i don't believe what greta is completely saying is true either though i believe that would there's well, a lot the key, of the key proof. word more proof. the key word proof. that, I, that we we're all saying that, one. that the key word to what we're saying is belief <laughs> if we get the word belief out of there then we can move on well no it's it. just it's choosing it's choosing well, kids to to promote an ideology, and I really think that you have to articulate yourself in a mature and adult-like fashion in order to push an, uh, an ideology. And whenever you throw children into that mix, what you're basically saying is how you that if a child, how if you question or critique or criticize a child, you're then lambasted uh-huh. for it because yeah. that's a child. How dare you attack a child? That's like no, cri- it's he- your fault for putting that child in that position in the first place. He criticized the child for what she was born for, saying she has no way she she can't have a platform. What? That's basically what he was saying. That she don't have exactly a, a right to her opinion? Is that what you said? Yeah, the platform in that matter. But, but there's other ways to go about getting your voice heard without being uh, yeah. as, uh what would you call her at uh, uh, this situation they used her as a as a puppet you yeah. know they they used her as just like a, a poster child like why why know? not a scientist come up why and say the same thing she said yeah. why 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 why, why not have. why a child because they have because they have who plenty of who? times Name me a prominent scientist that has come out besides oh, Bill Google Nye. It. Bill Nye is not a climate scientist. Rudy, Google it. Google it. Google it. You'll Google oh. it, and there's been many speeches from from there. But then many from people that have people that have been affected by the water crisis that I've said too. There's, I believe uh, um, people from America too. You know, it's not just all these other. So there have you can Google them right now. Yeah, but the so, scientists I mean, back. You got to Google. remember, twenty five years ago, the scientists were you saying that the, that, the, that the Google. ice caps on all these high light mountains. Would be gone. We're now in 2019, and they're still there. But yeah. they're shrinking. No, they they only show the ice caps that melt every could, year. But, How come they're not but, showing but the but poles that, melting? But that, but that yeah, could and that's the, the problem. That they just, select their data just, to they, make it they, seem okay. worse than it actually is. The, the ice and caps exactly they show that saying. are melting; those melt like that every year since and you get people. We've been recording. You get people that say that the uh-huh. world's going to end in ten years. I mean, they're, and that's not hyperbole. That they're literally serious about that. That the world is going to okay. end in twelve years. No, but 10, my years. my point is, look, Angel, check this out. My point that. is, like, hey, stop picking your I'm data. That's stop picking. Pollution. That's what they say. No, but hold on. My that's thing what Greta believes. My data. Look, look. My I'm thing not is, my data. I'm saying that 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 is a possibility. That it might be a possibility, right. right? But you could for sure prove that 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 the pollution. And that's what I'm. I've been. I didn't say nothing about you know uh, yeah. severe climate change where we're going to die and we're going to. You know, it's going to be like, you know, day after tomorrow. I never say anything. I've been focusing just on the pollution aspect because yeah. that, is what's, that is what's provable. And 99.9% provable because that's is 100%. But that's more provable. No, that's true. Because but you know what? But because let's, we see evidence. So no, that's... As a, as a, as a, well, that's... As a uh, that's, straw man because I never said that. That's, I never said anything about hold on, listen, change. That's, I talked about pollution. That's true. The whole pollution thing, fine. But then I don't see you trading in your car for an electric vehicle or uh, or taking the bus or, you know, fighting pollution. You see, it's easy to say, but it's hard to do because we all depend on things that pollute this environment. Look, look, at, yeah. um, look at Chevron. Chevron got sued in 2012, I think it was, 
for polluting the Amazon uh, rainforest and spewing millions of tons of pollutants into the into the river. But yet we're all still buying gas. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what are we supposed to do? We're we're taking progressive steps to end we, pollution. Yeah, we have gas, but we have certain things in new newer cars. You know, saying that that don't put out as much emissions. Right. You have so, companies that get pollution. Hold on, you got companies that that pollute and want to pollute more. Right. And, and, and go over here and lobby right. for it to go down. Or, or find so ways so around. To, or find so ways around car, to to pollute you have to more. Use car, right. Yeah. But 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 again, I'm talking about about the pollutions where they're 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 actually putting stuff directly into the water. Yeah. And they're and there's companies the that can buy. Uh, uh, have that you heard water. of those? Uh, what are they? Pollution what, credits or whatever that companies can buy from other companies. Sometimes these small corporations pollute more than 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 uh, right. than small than, than cities. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. But so that's like, that's why we all got to. If if that's the case, and we feel that strong about it, then we all should just stop buying from the companies and let it go away. It really is that maybe, simple. Yeah. It is that simple yeah. because companies can buy pollution credits from other companies that haven't used all theirs I, yet. You know what I mean? To find I spend ways a lot around. Money on food, so I'm done with that. Yeah, you know I'm what I'm saying? Shit, I gotta eat, bro. But yeah, yeah. no, I hear you, but. I'm not not only speaking to you, but other people that are listening uh, are also going to take things a certain way. I just want to make sure that people understand that, okay, fine. What she's saying is valid, and okay, I get it and everything, and he shouldn't have said that the way he did. But if we, feel, if we all feel this strongly about it, how come we're not making more strive to end pollution, i.e. not buying stuff from certain countries that we know because these companies and countries are 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 are, are, are polluting more yeah and but again, we're we're, we're feeding a lot of, because a lot of, we're feeding a lot the beast by buying and, and by buying from these countries where we're actually fueling the fire with fire with, with gas uh-huh. i should say so it's like if we felt that deep about it let's just stop buying from these companies or countries and then that you know what i mean that'd be one big step True. i think so I think I think we buy too much. I think in this country we buy too much wasteless shit. Yeah. I'm a big secondhand person. A lot, most of my I'm very proper people in my house. Oh, your house looks good. I'm like, man, I bought everything here on on secondhand. The only thing I buy secondhand is my drawers and my socks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everything and, and well, and my Levi's too. I buy I buy number wearing number Levi's, but everything I can't, else I can't is afford second, fifty dollar pants. Secondhand. <laughs> well, hold on. Besides my mattress and my and you know, stuff like that, but like my plants inside. All the pictures, even my TV. I got lucky. Got this Vizio, brand new Vizio TV at a at a at a, at a Goodwill. Nice. A Fifty a fifty two ones, a three D one. So um, I'm a big bargain shopper, man. So yeah, I would agree. I, I think Americans do buy a lot of wasted shit. Yeah, but not you only know? Americans. I mean, there's, you know, there's other people you know, from but, different countries I mean, that overindulge but, and we're gluttonous. So and all j- that. just to get back, that to guy's the point. an asshole. That guy's an asshole, really, for saying that shit. He's a fucking asshole. He's a bitch for that shit, saying some shit like that. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. I I probably wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have pointed out the obvious that he did, but. But why say it though? Why why have to say the obvious? Well, That's for like, the same so, reason because it's obvious. For, but for the same reason why the parents make their kids do that. Yeah, I, I, like, it's, it's like I think I think there's a lot of people at you, fault in that. It, it's like some lady's talking to you, right? She's saying something that's right. She might be ugly and be like, you know, by the way, why she got to be you ugly? Gotta, you got to smart girls are dumb now. Bitch. Shut, shut <laughs> no. the fuck up. So I, do I, you? I, do, so you believe in? It's uh, like saying some shit like that. This is try, you know, but it's like. But the thing yeah, is, though, Angel, you, what you to have say. to realize, what I don't think you're realizing, is that climate scientists uh-huh. have been doom and gloom for thirty to forty years. When uh, when Al Gore released his all of his documentaries back in. The early 2000s, he was saying by 10 to 12 years, the same kind of terminology, that all the polar uh-huh. ice caps and all the mountains that would be... I mean, and th- he wasn't saying this in speculations. He was saying, this is what the science says, this is what the science says, this is what the science says. Oh, fuck out, Gord. He was wrong. But the people are saying the same things now. And our emissions have gone down significantly, he, 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 even he, he, with Trump in office. He, he and you're still saying the that pollution you're, you're defending. Well, this, this, this girl is right. saying something right. This girl is saying something right. Well, how do we know she's saying something right? Because we've heard the same stuff before. And it turned out to be wrong. It's, hy- it's not hyperbole. So you're saying our kids are not going to have to deal with, with 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 the effects that we're you know this all this. Well, you have stuff to be specific. Doing. What what are you talking about? Stuff that we allowed, you know. I mean, we're we're having our kids in like 
nowadays we're stuck with it, right? With how you know big we are and stuff like that. But like nuclear power, you know. Okay. Um, nuclear been, power. What? <laughs> what about you know, it? Well, they're gonna have to deal with the waste for how many hundreds of thousands of years? You know what I'm saying? When 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 we had we had you know solar okay. energy okay. resources back in the 70s. Car, I mean, President solar Carter power put a fucking is insufficient. Solar, solar power, wind but, power uh, is insufficient. Then maybe we just need to use less energy. But it's about a, it's about a change so for you're the willing, betterment of our children. I am willing, yes, to, do, to, to 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 watch less TV. That I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying to be mandatory, but it would have to, to be something to, to drive less, to drive less, culturally change, to give up your car, to go back and live like they did a hundred and some years ago. Uh, no AC, no electricity, no running water. And that, that's that's what you're talking about, then, right? So you would rather go back what? to those days. Well, like coaching carriage, <laughs> horse and carriage, <laughs> horse and buggy. I mean, that's basically it. it for most people it that could, think it, like that, it, it's either all or nothing. It could get to a point. It could get to a point where it could be charged gravitation and be such in a way where we could just walk out of our door and there can be charged right right there. Be you know, what? What an underground that? subway through the whole city, you know, through the whole city, you know. But what's going to um, power the subway? <laughs> what's going to power the power, subway? Power. <laughs> Angel. Solar power and wind power. It's insufficient. It doesn't generate enough power. Are you sure about that? I don't think so, Rudy. Okay. Maybe, maybe in so. like 10 and years, it, five years, just, yeah. But. Okay, okay, Rudy, do you agree with that? Maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, if, if we start right now, right, maybe 15, 20 years, 30 years of technology would be but way there, better where it'll be nothing, right? Is already, okay, let, let's take, for instance, on, the no, electric wait. power car. What, what, okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let's stop right there. Let, let's answer my question. No, answer my question directly because I was on I told you I would not try. Okay, okay what was your question? Best. What was your question? Because I was answering was, it. I was answering it. Right ahead. now, right, we, we started with solar power, everything, wind power, everything. Don't you think in 20, 30 years okay. would be at a place where it would be a lot better? Like where, where before, here's a picture of okay. like somebody with like a head stereo and and a, and, a, and, a, and a gps about all but then now okay so the forward. answer is yes that if we started now yes. we would be there but the problem is yes. is okay. we're not even there now so your your question okay. is kind of rhetorical because you can't you can't really answer that question because it's a hypothetical if we did start Thank now then answer. yes the problem for is answer. for instance for an instance with electric vehicles right so mm -hmm. right now an electric vehicle could only go so far and they cost so much money right so yeah. they're not accessible for people that are not that don't have the disposable income for it. Well, Nissan's changing that. They're actually coming out with the car next year. That no, they actually do have one now, the Nissan Leaf, but it's not as no, no, reliable. no. They, they got a new, oh, one, a new one that's going to well, come Volkswagen's out. Volkswagen's coming out with the series uh, of them, but still, their their base model is like uh, fifty or sixty. 000. Well, you know what? What's what's the trip is? The, uh -huh. Don't let's not forget the very first cars invented were electric they were cars. Electric. Before but the petroleum. reason why they went away from it is mm -hmm. because they weren't they weren't no sufficient. actually they actually had lipo and um, lithium polymer they ion they, they had they, they were had, faster the the battery technology well Teslas are fast yeah because it's direct power man yeah uh, but the, the the means were there it's just the money was in in petrol because the everybody amount was that invested. it takes to produce it. The, the, and that's that's the problem. The cost to produce it is so high, it would make it nearly useless. That's the problem we're having now. As time goes on and the free market uh -huh. capitalism will find a way to make it cheaper because it's just inevitable. Because if somebody could figure out how to make it cheaper, they're going to be on top. That's the problem. It's not that people are opposed to it. It's just that it's not cheap enough for the mass public. But as soon as it will, and that's, a, that's why I don't get what people say, oh, well, I, nobody's opposed to it. It's just not feasible yet. But I will believe it will, will do. But what you're saying is everybody has to stop, do, stop enjoying life the way we enjoy it now. If you really care about your future, care about your kids, you need to stop using electricity, stop driving cars. I mean, it's like, wait, 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 wait. That is an extreme. Question? Go ahead. Can I ask you another question? Go ahead. You don't so you, uh, you don't think the fossil industry is, has a very high influence in policy yeah, they making? Do. Yes, they has do. Been? Yes, of course. Yes, they do. So don't you think it could be? You know, money in one day it's trillions of dollars, and and and, and, and it has been. Petroleum. It has been. It has been for a long time, very, very long since early, well, early. Yes, there has because this guy since, invented since admitted, this guy invented a battery uh -huh. that right now would rival anything out there right now. It could power houses. It could power cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. 
on one charge in the last 30 years. Well, yeah. I forgot what company it was that bought his patent and said, hey, we'll buy this technology off of you with the promise of ma mass marketing it. Oh, hell yeah. So the guy, the guy sold it and then they hit it. And it wasn't. It. In, it wasn't until uh, Eli Eli Musk, or whatever his name is, Elon Elon Musk, that came up with, with the Tesla, you know, electric cars. That because you know, ev people were 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 uh, modifying their gas engines to EV cars a long time ago. It just got cheaper yeah, yeah. as soon as Tesla came. No, out. in the seventies, Volkswagen actually had some models, some Volkswagen buses and bus uh, bugs that were electric. Dude, they even had uh, right. Honda. Even had a car that ran on on. Um, well, not only Honda, but Honda was one of the main ones that had one that uh, worked on uh, propane. It was cheaper. Yeah. I need a game Rudy up. What do you mean? So you made two things that are very important. A, or I think Jose said agreed. Uh, maybe so maybe one you and one Jose. I think <laughs> Jose they agreed that yeah, the fossil industry has been highly influenced into policy making. Oh yeah, and he yeah. gave a great oh, just example. like the pharmaceutical and medicine. Well, let me okay. let me say and something you, to that too though, no, because no, no, because no, this no, government no, no, has no, made no, a lot of things illegal. And one of the things that it's made illegal, for instance, and this is a lot of this is why I don't like this uh -huh. is why for a long time I've been a libertarian because I was so anti big government because I couldn't I couldn't put a wind generator on my property. If I was here in California because of regulation, uh -huh. because yeah, because if I could, I would. But we can't for the most part because of government, and that's for the large part Democrat policies for the most part. Oh God! Can I finish? Can I finish? Go ahead, finish. go ahead. Okay, I'm finished. Not just one. So, so, uh, so, petrol has been a big influence. So it's been for over a hundred years. It's been proven that electricity can be used as as you know, it can be used to power, right? Mm -hmm. It might have been a little more expensive, whatever, maybe you would have ever saved, but there's a whole different factors to that, too. Mm -hmm. That the fossil industry has involved in a lot of parts that were being made that they were using, they were, you know, lobbying that and, and pressuring other people to make the cost of things up. That's why it's so much more expensive. It's not because to do it is because the parts are because they get pressured to up the price. So that's a whole different conversation, though. But anyways, so yeah, it might be a little more expensive, and that was arguing back then, same argument now, or whatever. But... Um, the reason why, uh, but it, it, that's not the real reason why it, it, it's because it's expensive. It's because the false industry had a lot of influence. But again, I go back, we really agreed to something too, and he said that, uh, oh yeah, if you gave it 20, 30 years, then it'd be a lot better, it'd be a lot cheaper. Again, when I went back, the Carter administration was the one who was pushing clean energy, wind energy, they put a solar panels on top of the White House. What did the Republican, conservative, um, ultra-capitalist uh, Ronald Reagan do? Take them off. Right, because it was offensive to his pet petrol friends and contributors. So that's what I'm saying is like it's going to be a, it's going to take time to get it to a place. But we've had a hundred year delay because of policymakers that were being bought off by the by the fossil fossil fuel industries. And the same thing that's happening now. You know, it's costing a lot of money to change these oils that are in the in Canada into oil that we can use, and not even all of it can be used for gasoline. You know, because it takes a certain kind. You know, because oil is also used in a lot of things, in plastics, and tires, car parts, clothes, uh, clothes. Styrofoam, you know, I mean, I mean, rubber. yeah, star. I mean, I mean, it's used in a lot, a lot, a lot of shit. Your anal lube. So, so the, you know, that's another thing people don't understand. That's why the fossil energy is so big because it goes into not that's just people so just thinking about cars and stuff, but so you know, so it's like. Um, you know, because a lot of these parts. Major, what's your point? That, uh, hold on. Uh, 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 and, and a on lot and of on these. On and on. Get to a, a point. Lot of, uh, I did. I got to my point.